Hi friends, I'm Abby and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be starting a reading vlog, a vlog of reading sci-fi duologies. So sci-fi as a genre is something that I really want to be getting into more of. Uh, I read predominantly fantasy. Yes, predominantly fantasy. Uh, I think I pretty much say that I'm a fantasy and sci-fi reader and I pretty much read fantasy then probably romance, then probably sci-fi. And I haven't been doing very well at reading sci-fi books this year. I did do a vlog where I read some sci-fi standalones over a weekend, so I can link that because I started with some standalones to try and ease myself into reading more sci-fi. And now we're going on to duologies because again, easing myself in, less commitment with duologies than with a big, big series, so duologies. So I have three duologies here that I'm planning to read. I'm not sure yet if this vlog is going to contain both the first book and the second book in the duology, or I will just read the first book and then I'll read the second book elsewhere, <laughs> like non-vlogged. It will depend on how long this takes me to do uh, because my reading has been a little bit sporadic lately, so uh, we shall see. I have three duologies here which I am planning to start and planning to hopefully read through and maybe binge. I think they're all quite different, so I've tried to pick different areas of sci-fi, different yeah, different parts of the sci-fi genre so that I can really try to see what parts of sci-fi I enjoy the most. Uh, because it's a genre that I haven't read tons from, I want to see what works for me. Is it the uh, epic space operas? Is it the more dystopian ones? Is it the ones set in our world? Is it the ones set in space? Like, is trying to find out exactly what, what aspects of the genre I personally enjoy and what I would want to be reading more of. Because as it's a genre I don't know so well, I don't know what parts I love and what I should be gravitating towards. Uh, and if I am picking up sci-fi books in the future, I want to be picking up books that I am going to be enjoying. There's no point in me, pick, in me picking up loads and loads of space operas only to find out after reading three or something that I don't enjoy them and then having a whole pile of space operas on my TBR. Granted, I shouldn't like discount a whole genre or part of a genre after reading only a few, but hopefully by gradually making my way through a few more sci-fi books, I can start to see what my taste is and hopefully get more of an idea of where I want to go with that genre. Because with fantasy, I feel like I know what I like now. I, I know what I like with fantasy. It uh, doesn't mean I'm gonna stop reading fantasy because I am always going to be reading fantasy. I love fantasy, but I know what I like and I know what I don't like so much. So that's what I'm gonna try and get to with sci-fi. So the three that I've got here, the three that I am going to be working on over the course of the next few weeks. Uh, I have Parable of the Sir by Octavia E. Butler. This is a dystopian future sci-fi set in our world following a main character Lauren. Sort of a realistic dystopian sci-fi. I also have Hyperion by Dan Simmons. This is a classic work of sci-fi and I believe that this is a collection of short stories that come together to create an overall narrative and you're following seven pilgrims set out on a quest for the legendary time tombs on Hyperion home to the Shrike, part god and part killing machine with the powers that transcend the limits of time and space and I think you get a short story following each of these pilgrims. And then I also have A Memory Called Empire by Arcady Martin, which is, I uh, believe, a more of a political sci-fi. And you're following amb an ambassador who is posted to a new mining station following, I think, the death of the previous ambassador. And I think she figures out that the death of the previous ambassador was not an accident. And she's trying to piece together what has gone on within this space station. This is what I'm going to be reading over the course of this vlog. Maybe I'll read the second book as well, we shall see. But definitely the first book. I don't quite know how I'm going to feel about these, which ones I'm going to like the most, which ones I'm going to, if I'm going to like them all, love them all, hate them all, I don't know. Normally I go into books thinking they're going to be five stars. This lot, I don't know if they're going to be five stars. I'm not too sure because a memory called Empire, I've heard very conflicting things on. I know people love it, I know people that don't like it. Normally I feel as though I taste, my tastes align with both of these people, so I feel like it could go either way. Hyperion being classic, uh, me and classic sci-fi, we haven't always got along. Doom being the example, which we, where I really did not get along with it. I'm hopeful, but I don't know. And then Parable of the Sower, I did really, really love Kindred. But actually, I can already say this is not a five star because I have actually already read it. So I will get into my thoughts just now on Parable of the But we shall see for the rest, for these other two, if they're going to be five stars. Actually, upon starting this vlog, I have already read Parable of the Sower and I liked it but didn't love it. This was a bit of a weird experience for me, I would say. 
I love Kindred, but it's a, that's a weird thing to say considering the dark topics of the book uh, and how sort of gruelling it was to read. But I enjoyed it. Whereas Power of the Sower, I could see similarities definitely be like between the writing style, between the structuring and like the way that themes are ex explored. I could see that, you, that it was the same author. I, I could definitely see the similarities between them but it didn't work so well for me in Power of the Sower. And I do think that with Octavia Butler's books, they are going to be ones that grow on me through time because I don't think of them as enjoyable works. They're not books that I am racing through the pages, enjoying every word, seeing, loving the experience of reading books. They are very thematic. And themes are not things that I generally read for. I read for characters and world building and just the drama that goes on between different people like that's what I read for I don't generally read for themes themes I think are great for discussion and I great and I think they're great for reflection but they don't provide me with enjoyment and that's what this book felt like to me like it felt very thematic I think it was definitely an interesting read you are following main character Lauren and her family in this not a compound but this futuristic uh, California Futuristic being this is written in the 90s and it's set in the 2020s. So it's set in our current day, uh, which is a bit bizarre to read. And actually, I can see similarities with our current day. And I've heard that Power of the Talents, the second book, is even more prophetic than this one, which is more accurate to our world and what we're living in currently. And so you're following her and the society that she's living in currently, which is a dystopian future, uh, although. Some of it is very close to what we're living in right now. I think it was quite funny me reading this at the time that I did because in, in this the world is has many, has many more struggles. There is an issues with wildfires. There's um, heat and difficulties with food, and everything is going up in price. Like the value of products versus the value of currency. And living in the UK right now, we have had a very very hot summer that is not normal. Like I don't we've. We've hit over 40 degrees Celsius, which is over 100 Fahrenheit for the first time ever. Uh, and this country is not made for that. We are not a place that generally gets that. We're a very moderate climate here. That combined with like the wildfires that we have had here, like in the centre of London, there's been wildfires, which is just boggling, like mind boggling to think about. And combined with the cost of everything going up, like everything is going up in price, a ridiculous amount, apart from my salary, like everything is going up. It's a bit ridiculous. It's painful. The, like doing a food shop is now getting painful. It's very, very noticeable. It, it does get you to thinking. Like it did get me to thinking with those themes, but I wouldn't say it was the most, most enjoyable read for me because I don't think I ever connected to Lauren as a character and to, to her experience. She didn't necessarily feel the most fleshed out character to me. I think there was a very large focus on religion and the act of being religious. So not necessarily God, but like praying and being religious as a theme in this. And and that is not something that I've really connected to. Like I'm not the most religious person. And so that didn't really connect to me. Like I didn't connect to her and her religion that she was creating. I feel a bit conflicted on this. I feel conflicted because I could see those similarities with her world, but I, I don't know if I really liked exploring that. I don't know. Although this is saying, I think this starts in 2024 and I'm like, is this is the 2024 actually going to be like this is 2024 actually going to be like this i do feel a bit conflicted on it i don't know whether i'm going to keep going with power of the talent right now i don't know i don't own it i did listen to this on script as i know that second book is on script whether i keep going and read it on script and i know that power of the talents i think is generally more liked than this one and it is the one that has won more awards so as of right now i'm a bit conflicted we shall see maybe as the blog goes on, we will get a final decision on if I'm going to read Power of the Talents. Uh, but for right now, this one is read and finished. And I think I've given it like a 3.5 star. Th uh, yeah, a 3 to a 3.5 star that I liked it, didn't love it, could see the value in it. I could see definite value in it. Like, I don't think it's a bad book, but I don't think it was necessarily the book for me. I am now going to go away and read the other two books for this blog. This one I'm planning to buddy read with Aaron from Book to Busy, and this one I have no buddy read plans for. It was on my July TBR, I didn't get to it, it is now August. 
let's just see when I get to these both and I will check back in once I have done a little bit more reading. Hello, hello. So some time has passed and I just thought I would check in on the progress that I've been making on my sci-fi books. So I think when I last checked in, I had read and I'd finished Parable of the Sower and I had liked it, didn't love it. And I was trying to decide if I wanted to continue on with the duology or not. And I don't think I will actually. A couple of weeks have passed since then actually. I don't know, I'm not feeling like any gravitation really to read Parable of the Talents, like it's not shouting out to me, read me, read me. Uh, but I definitely do want to keep trying Octavia Butler, but I don't know if I want to necessarily keep trying that series. I don't feel hooked enough to keep going with it. And there are plenty of other books that are shouting out to me more saying read me, read me. Uh, maybe it's a never say never type thing, but as of right now, I don't think I'm going to be reading Parable of the Talents. For the other two books for this vlog and the other two duologies that I'm going to be starting, maybe finishing, uh, I have actually started them both. I have started A Memory Called Empire by Arcady Martin and I am 156 pages into this. I mostly, I read the majority of that last weekend actually. Uh, last weekend I went to a friend's wedding and then I started this on the train home and I pretty much read the bulk of those 156 pages on the train home and then I literally read nothing all week. So I'm still at page 156. I actually really enjoyed those first 100 pages. I was a bit nervous going into this because I thought it was going to be a little bit daunting in terms of the language, but actually I found the language quite easily, easy to read. Um, I've just been very engaged in what's going on here. I mean, there is like some technologies that I've had to try and get my head around that the technology is quite interesting. I'm, I'm enjoying it. I'm very, very, I'm very, very intrigued by what's going on here. So you're following a main character, Mahit, or Mahit, Mahit, and uh, she has been sent to this empire colony as an outsider and she is there to replace uh, the previous ambassador who is dead, presumed murdered. And she is there as his replacement and she is sort of seen as like an alien type figure that their, her colony or where, she, where she's from is sort of an outsider and she can't fit into this city that she's been placed in. And I've been really, really liking this. I've been liking the mystery of trying to figure out like what's going on with the previous ambassador, why he's dead, what's going on on this station, trying to figure out like the politics of the situation and what she's going through and this sort of being thrown into this other culture, although one that she sort of knows, but thrown into this culture and this life and with the threat of knowing that her, the, her previous counterpart was murdered and trying to just get herself through society without making too many faux pas uh, and I really like that I, I do really like that and her sort of studying as well these this other culture and seeing how these cultures are, mi are mixing together the different technologies that these cultures have so I, I like that I'm definitely intrigued with where the politics is going to go I feel as though at this point it's just I've just had a little snapshot into what is happening um, and the political sphere currently as she settles into her new life in this uh, city. Enjoying this. Definitely, definitely enjoying this. And then I have also started Hyperion by Dan Simmons. This one I've been doing a mixture of physical and audio. This one I did start this week. I read the majority of what I've read of this. Well, I started it on Wednesday, but my head was not in it. My head was not in the right place to be reading on Wednesday, but I did start it. I don't know how much was really like really processed in my head because it, it wasn't really like sticking very well. And then yesterday on Friday, I did like re, well, not restart it because I didn't reread all those pages, but I did like flip through, make sure that I'd understood what was happening and then kept going. And then I have read, I've got quite far since then. I'm now like halfway through. I am quite enjoying, like I've been immersion reading this with the audiobook and physically reading it. And I feel like that's been a very good experience. Like, that's been getting it like into my head. Uh, I have also done a little bit where I've just listened to it. And I feel as though the bits where I've listened and read at the same time have settled better in my brain. I, I don't know if I like it or not. I just don't know. I don't feel as though I love it, but I don't hate it, but I, I just don't really know how I feel about it. It's just a bit bizarre. So in this one, you are following these six, seven strangers who are each telling their life story on, on a pilgrimage to this shrike uh, and, the, and the, the planet of Hyperion. I've read three of the stories currently. I've had, I've seen three different I guess short stories that are going to make up this whole narrative. I don't quite see quite how they link just yet, except they all feature the shrike in some way or other. I just don't really know where it's going. I have lots of questions right now. Part of me is wondering if I, if my level of confusion is increased because 
my head has been a little bit all over the place this, this week or if the confusion is because it's like a read and find out, read and find out situation so or whether it's a little bit of both that my head being all over the place and also this book have been not maybe it's not been the best combination of books to be reading when your head's all over the place maybe I needed to like have this as like a book when my head was settled and I could really concentrate on it but anyway there is definitely progress being made in these two and I am hoping to have these finished over the next few days hopefully hello hello so I thought I would give a little update because I have finished Hyperion finally by Dan Simmons I think this is gonna be like my worst reading month ever because I'm just it's just taking me a long time to do any reading. Uh, I've been very, very busy in terms of work, in terms of like that taking up a lot of brain power and like just brain space lately so that I haven't really had any desire to read when I have had time and I haven't really had that much time. And then I was traveling with work last week. So it's just, reading's not really been happening. But I did finish Hyperion. I did finish it last week, actually. I feel a bit mixed on it. I think it's well written. I, 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 the writing style in and of itself I think is quite good but maybe because of the short story format I just never felt like I connected to the story like it, it all felt a little bit underwhelming to me like I didn't get enough answers out of it and I get that it's like the first part in a duology that the duology maybe the second book gives more answers but I just wasn't feeling as though I was it was giving me enough in terms of like yeah in terms of everything like I do think the most interesting parts are to do with the shrike and in terms of the uh like time stuff and how everything all links together and why these people are being chosen for this pilgrimage like that I think is the most interesting part but I wasn't interested in all of their stories I think some of them were better than others definitely I think there were there were definitely some stronger stories but I don't feel as though any of any of the stories were like favourites that they, I really like connect to it. I, I just expected more. I was just really underwhelmed I think by it. Like I kept hoping as I was reading it to love it and part of me was like is it me? Is it me and not the book? Because at the time I my concentration wasn't very good. I was like is it me? Is it me? And then I'd reread things because I was like well maybe I didn't connect to that bit because I, I, I was reading it too quickly. I wasn't paying enough attention so I'd reread and I'd be like like the, I reread the ending like I read the ending on the train to the airport and pretty much finished it as I was getting to the airport and then I was like oh is that it is that is that it is that is that it so then I re-listened to the ending on a run and I was like that really was it that that was it that was the ending and I was like okay it's not that when I was like getting to the airport, I was like flustered or anything. It was like, that was just it. I'm also, some of the language in here has not aged well. It, it hasn't. Uh, and I don't like, I don't want this a situation to be like my Dune video uh, in the sense that I got a lot of hate for how I felt about Dune. And this, I guess, would fall in the same sort of category in, in that it is a, epic work of older sci-fi and my critiques are very different but there are definitely things in here that have not aged well at all uh, and that I found them uncomfortable to read so I'll try and put like some clips in of some of the like words and phrases the one that like really stood out to me like I literally stopped the, stopped reading when I got to it and was like what how is this still published and that's at page 50 so very early on so I wouldn't really count it as a spoiler and it's when the priest is encountering uh, these people for the first time and he describes them as uh, they're sort of they're bald they're short they're sexless one might be tempted to describe the round faces of the procurer as cherubic until and um, upon closer inspection that impression of sweetness fades and is replaced by another interpretation placid idiocy as a priest, I've spent enough time on backward worlds to see the effects of an ancient genetic disorder variously called Down syndrome, Mongolism or generation ship legacy. This then was the overall impression created by the 60 or so dark robed little people who had approached me. I was being greeted by a silent smiling band of bald, retarded children. I think he also describes them as like hideous or freakish or I will try and like 
find the exact words. I'll put them on the screen. But that is just an awful way to describe people with Down syndrome. Like, how is that? How is that okay? How is that okay to describe these people as having Down syndrome and as looking as though they are bald, sexless, bald, retarded children? That it's just not okay. It just isn't okay at all. That one I think was the worst one that really stood out to me and really would maybe just go that that's not right. I think there were a few other things like later on that you know just pulled it really pulled me out of the story. Overall I have a feeling of underwhelming disappointment I would say by Hyperion. I won't be continuing on with this unfortunately. I think me and older works of sci-fi just don't click maybe we just don't get along maybe there's just something that doesn't gel between me and older works of sci-fi i'm just gonna have to i've tried it i'm not gonna say never say never to try again but i have tried a few now and i guess we are just not the most compatible and i should spend more of my efforts reading in genres and that are more likely to please me and more likely to bring me joy and enjoyment. So I am still reading A Memory Called Empire. I feel quite sorry for this book because this is the book that I have been most enjoying this month. Uh, that This is the book that I want to be reading. I just haven't had that much time and so I've literally been reading it for weeks but it's the book that I am most enjoying this month. So the book's had a hard time because of my life getting in the way but hopefully I will now be able to make some progress in a memory called Empire and actually be able to finish that off. And that's probably going to be the only one where I actually want to continue in the duology. That for Hyperion and Parable, Parable of the Soul, I don't think I'm not going to be continuing in them. It feels a little bit disappointing that this vlog has been such a flop because I wanted to find new sci fi favourites. And that hasn't really been the case. I haven't really found any new sci fi favourites. Memory called Empire still having its chance. But yes, I was hoping there would all be favourites or new books that I was really, really enjoying. So a bit sad, a bit sad about that. But anyway, I will check back in once I actually have a bit more of a review for A Memory Called Empire. So I'm now here to wrap up this sci-fi vlog because I have now finished A Memory Called Empire, the third and final sci-fi book for this vlog. So this is definitely my favourite of the ones that I've read. Uh, and I did thoroughly enjoy this one. It took me a while to read, but that is not the book's fault. It is completely my fault. I think I've talked quite a lot about my feelings on this because I did do a, I guess, a mid-book check-in. And I'd say my feelings stayed pretty much the same from then to the end that I was continuing to enjoy it. I was continuing to enjoy uh, the development of the world and the development of the characters and seeing where this was going. I will say that I think the second half was more action-packed as things unfolded and I did like the way the book ended and where we got to and the different reveals that were revealed to us. I thoroughly enjoyed this one and would recommend this book uh, and I have actually already gone out and I've bought the second book. I have not read it yet but I do own the second book so I'm definitely continuing in this duology that I very much enjoyed this one. I'm looking forward to seeing how it all wraps up in, with that second book. As for the other two books, so this pile of three duologies, I don't believe I will be continuing in either of these duologies. Not the most successful reading blogs in terms of my enjoyment because there was only one real like favourite. I, I don't think Parable of the Soul is bad, I just think it, it definitely has a lot to explore but I and it was it's very thematic but I wouldn't say it's something that brings me joy when I read it. Not that all books have to bring you joy but I read predominantly for enjoyment. I don't read to think so critically about my books like I read so that I am finding pleasure in the act of reading and enjoyment and not necessarily for like study or further into further into develop myself. Those are just sort of bonus factors so that's I guess where Power of the Soul and Me differ in that it's I probably didn't get what I was meant to get out of it. Maybe. Or maybe I did, I just, that's not what I read. And then for Hyperion, I'd say that I, ha I had expectations for it, that I wanted to love it, I wanted to enjoy it. I'd heard mostly rave reviews for it, that I was going into it anticipating 
that I, I was probably going to enjoy it because I know quite a few people that have really really loved this and loved this recently and they thoroughly thoroughly liked it and I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with the writing style in and of itself I just don't know if the short story narrative really worked for me that I kept trying to love it and trying to engage with the characters but maybe if it was more of a cohesive narrative as opposed to these sort of short stories where we get snippets into these people's lives and then seeing how they intertwine maybe i would have liked it to be a bit more not wrapped up because obviously they're in the second book but you're getting these stories maybe seeing exactly how they all link seeing like what the shrike is a little bit more and seeing it all sort of come together a bit more maybe that's what happens in book two maybe maybe but i just don't feel compelled enough to keep going like I didn't love it enough to feel as though I had to pick up the second book. I felt quite underwhelmed by the ending, uh, in addition to some of the choice vocabulary that was used throughout it. I think you could probably try and persuade me to read Parable of the Talents. That I think is persuadable, but I don't think I could be persuaded to read Fall of Hyperion. And I mean, I'm definitely going to read uh, A Desolation Called Peace. So <laughs> there's no question on this one. These are my thoughts on these three sci-fi books that are first in duologies. Let me know if you've read any of these, your thoughts on any of them, if you're going to pick any of them up. And thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my future videos. Bye!